everybody, welcome back to That Fiction Life. Welcome to my first ever reading vlog. I'm going to take you along as I read Queen of Air and Darkness. And yes, it is currently on my Audible app at the moment because the actual final copy hasn't come yet. This is Luna, in case you haven't met my child before. And I'm going to be recording my live reaction. But of course, I don't think I have to warn you that this video is just going to be full of spoilers. So as I got to the last chapter of Lord of Shadows, and I was closing my eyes because I was about to fall asleep, the book was ending and I thought, okay, so this is fine. And then we had that one death, and my eyes just opened so wide. I think this book is going to bring out some real darkness in Julian. As we saw throughout Lord of Shadows, he was getting more and more unhinged with everything that went down because the Fae are crazy manipulative. The thing that's freaking me out the most is the whole Warlock situation because Tessa is absolutely my favourite character in the whole Shadowhunter universe and the Magnus is sort of on his deathbed I guess and so this video is going to be a review of this book but you're going to get my live reaction. Let's begin. It has been about an hour. I have reached chapter three. In true Cassandra Clare fashion, I've already had the feels. What I appreciate the most so far is that it starts where it ended. And a lot of the time I find when we get a uh, next book, it skips over a large amount of time, which I think really takes away from letting us experience whatever tragedy happened. And then the next book after that starts a month later and it kind of makes you think, Excuse me, I want to feel the feels along with the characters. Can you walk me through it in detail? Just as Cassandra Clare has done here. So Lord of Shadows ended on the trauma of the council meeting, if you don't remember. We lost Robert Lightwood, we lost Livy. Now everyone is a mess, including me, because it's being described so vividly. So Magnus is alive, everyone. Not that I thought he was going to be dead or something at the start of this book, but imagine even the notion. Simon is back. Isabel is back. We didn't get Isabel and Simon in Lord of Shadows. I'm loving the development between Helen and Mark. I know it's been only a few pages of them hanging out, but I really love when they go and tell Tavi that Livy's dead. We didn't get to see them interact as siblings, obviously, because Helen's been exiled this whole time. They had to sort of work together because Julian was unavailable, so they had to be the one to tell Tavi. And it was such a moment and I'm kind of already thinking what the F is gonna happen now because it's been an hour of me reading slash listening to this and I'm already saying RIP to the fields. I've changed because I am going out so I can't actually be reading anymore tonight which is giving me trauma. So it's the next day and it is 4.27 p.m. So I spent most of the afternoon filming a video and I do have the tripod and lights set up so I thought I would give you another update because I have been listening to more of the audiobook. So I have made some progress. It says chapter eight here, but that actually means chapter seven. There's always a special audiobook introduction chapter. I'm not even that far into the book, but I'm already realizing that I'm loving the writing style. I felt like Lord of Shadows felt very rushed to me because the scenes were cut so short. We were switching perspectives and locations very quickly. And in Queen of Air and Darkness, it's already feeling very gradual. So since I last updated, I made a list. So we have the funeral, which takes up a lot of the four hours that I have just read slash listened to. I forgot that Jocelyn was alive because that monstrosity of a TV show completely messed with my version of real life Shadowhunter event. And when Jocelyn is there at the funeral, I was thinking, what the hell? And then I realized that whole segment was something else because it felt very dragged out in a good way. My favorite scene so far, I think, is the Jem and Emma scene. So Jem told Emma some things. Kit is a fairy, like, what the heck? Tessa is pregnant. Oh my God. The key thing that has happened so far, Julian took away his love of Emma. This is some vampire diaries taking away your humanity kind of thing. This is giving me flashbacks. I mean, realistically, I do not think that this is going to last because Julian and Emma, I 
feel pretty confident that they're going to end up together one way or another. Good morning, everyone. So it's the next day. We are now on day three of me trying to finish this book. So before I leave, I need to edit today's video, which is a Twilight unboxing and a Q&A, which will be up by the time this video will be up. So if you want to check that out, of course, it's on my channel. I'll link it down below as well. I unboxed uh, the 10th anniversary DVD box set, which is the coolest thing for a Twilight collector. And then I answered some questions that you guys asked me. So everything from unpopular opinions to my favorite ships, all of that. So in the last update, I think I got up to four hours and today we're at five hours 40. So what happened so far, which is giving me a lot of stress, is Robert Lightwood wrote in his bloody event diary, I just, of everything that he was promising to Emma and Julian, exposing their relationship. Look. I know that you probably didn't think that you were going to die, but this is a highly sensitive thing. Why would you make a record? I'm very disappointed in Robert here. So someone that I'm really loving at the moment actually is Kieran. Oh my God. Kieran in the first book was no. And then Kieran in the second book was everything I ever dreamed of. So I just took Luna out to the garden to take care of her business. And this is what's waiting for me in the porch. It's a package from Simon & Schuster. Luna's coming to help. Oh my God, I think this is it. It's so big. It smells so good. This has things. There are pictures inside. I did not know this was a thing. Oh, stop it. Thank you so much to Simon & Schuster. This is the best package I think I've ever received in my whole entire life. We are now walking to the station to go shopping. I've edited my video, which took about two and a half hours. So I didn't read much except something on our walk just here, which was hell, where Julian and Emma encountered Dane. And it turns out that the Inquisitor sent people to kill them. I'm seeing a lot of Julian darkness at the moment, which I'm totally loving. So I did predict a little bit that Julian's going to go down the dark side. He just stabbed Dane like it's nothing. It's no big deal. We just do what we need to to survive. So that's fun. Since I've last updated you, I've listened to so many hours of this book and I'm still nowhere near done. I really don't think that this whole bringing Livy back from the dead is going to work out in their favor. Essentially, they're trying to do what Malcolm did with Annabelle and she came back cray cray. Julian and Emma have found Jason Clary in Fairy imprisoned that whole rescue mission with kieran's brother him and christina come and rescue emma and julian and people start portaling out which has given me a load of stress everything that i am reading is showing just how good of a storyteller cassandra claire is my general calculation is that it has been a week and i have been reading but i thought i would give you a little update now as i am actually just about to finish editing my Warner Brothers studio tour, which I went to in November. I hadn't been on the tour before, let alone go to the launch and find myself at a dessert party afterwards where we hung out in the Great Hall for over two hours. So I'll link it down below for you if you want to watch it. It is my favorite video that I've ever filmed for my channel. You get to see my first reactions to Butterbeer. I filmed so much of the tour if you haven't been and want to see what it looks like. But currently in the story, we are in the alternate history 
So Emma and Julian have gone to a world where Sebastian won. This is some cursed child kind of business because we've gone back in time and they're kind of changing the history a little bit because there's two versions of them where they're a couple in this new world. Livy's alive. I just, you know, Raphael is mentioned. And as soon as he was mentioned, I melted. Uh, that was a really sad death from the original series. And I got this same feeling when I was reading The Ghosts of the Shadow Market novellas because in the first one Raphael is all alive and well. <laughs> Olivia and Cameron are a big part of this whole chunk of the book and they are together. I'm going to finish editing the video and because I'm just doing the logistics now so I've done the whole cut I just have to add music and some captions to some things that weren't caught on audio very well and then I have to make the thumbnail and things like that so I'm going to pop in Queen of Air and Darkness as I do this. I just need my eyes for this so my ears can enjoy the book. So I think I've made it about halfway through the audiobook now. And Julian's spell that Magnus had put on him where he didn't have emotions apparently is not valid in this world because magic is kind of non-existent. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of missing no emotions, Julian. Oh my god, I only like morally ambiguous men. I just got to a part where Julian and Emma are with Diana and they find the message from Tessa as to how they might be able to get out. She says, seek church. And everyone thinks she's talking about actual churches, but when Julian says she means the cat, Emma goes, please don't say all the cats are dead. I'm not sure I can cope with feline death on a massive scale. I love Emma's sense of humour. So she always says things in very serious situations. I just got to Raphael. I miss Raphael. Can Raphael be brought back to life? Because these lines are gold. This is a stupid plan and you are all going to die. I see all the angel's gifts are truly gone living. Only the Nephilim gift of remarkable short-sightedness. Out of the demonic frying pan right back into the demonic frying pan. Oh, Raphael, this is both tragic and hilarious at the t same time. So in this world, Raphael hates Magnus. So Julian tells him he named his child for you, Raphael Santiago Lightwood Bain. And then Raphael says, this is revolting. So everybody knows I'm so embarrassed. Okay, so what I think Sandra Claire is trying to do in this book, bring back my feels from the original series. I swear to God, if a Herndell makes an appearance in this section, I will have to be carried out of here in a stretcher. Tessa is back, everybody. Everything will be okay. We're all saved. Jem is dead too? What do you mean, Jem is dead? Tessa has had the most tragic life. No, you know, this is too much. I'm gonna stop here and we're gonna carry on editing my video. I've reached a part of the book that I'm really, really enjoying. So I thought today was a perfect time to get back into reading. I am determined to finish this book today. We have made a lot of progress since I've last spoken to the camera. My main reason for putting this book down for a little while is the pacing of the plot. This book is absolutely huge and I'm starting to realize that it didn't need to be. I think the old characters are being slightly overused. One of my favorite things about Cassie's books is the way that we go back to other characters that we already love. However, I think the main characters in this book feel like side characters to me at points because we see Clary and Jace, we see Magnus and Alex so much and they drive the plot a lot. So that's point number one. Point number two, there's nothing convincing me that they are in any kind of danger because at this point we know they're going to somehow find a way around what's going on, which you know, I don't want any of these people to die realistically, but at the same time, I'm not at the edge of my seat as I have in Cassie's other books. The point where I'm up to now, Julian has just had his meeting with everyone for all of his allies coming over to the LA Institute. This has been one of my favorite scenes. It was so reminiscent of the meeting of all the creatures and shadow hunters in City of Heavenly Fire. 
it was kind of this epic finale of everyone coming together, putting their differences aside, which I really liked, Julian stepping into this leader role. There is one scene we have to talk about, was this new developed relationship between Kieran, Christina and Mark. I don't know about you, but I am here for it. I think it's very progressive for the YA genre because we don't normally see this kind of relationship. I really do love all these three characters individually. Christina is one of my favourite female characters in the Shadowhunter world. Oh, Kieran, I love Kieran. I really feel like I did a 360 on Kieran because the first time we met him, I thought he was insane. Mark was always interesting to me. I just have the big fight at the end left now because they've confronted the council, but I'm excited to carry on. So those are just some of my thoughts. I don't really think I liked seeing Sebastian all that much. I just feel like a lot of the old plots are being recycled. Time has come. I have finally finished Queen of Air and Darkness after nearly three months. So we've even had reviews of other books in between. But this has been a journey. We've had our ups and downs and I had an incredible afternoon just now reading up until the end. Since I am going out today, I have changed and redone my makeup. So just before I leave the house, I want to do a quick sit down to give you my final thought. We've had the big fight at the end. I was not expecting the whole giant angel with Julian and Emma. Since when is this a thing? But apparently that's how you get rid of a parabatai bond when two people are actually in love. So for future generations, this is how it's done. I like that we got this sense of danger. So when Emma was on the edge of her life, I felt that. I really enjoyed the epilogue. I think Alec becoming the consul is one of the best things to come out of this book. I absolutely adore Alec as a character. So I'm so happy to see the older characters infiltrating all these ranks. So the Jace from the other world coming into the plot, I think is a really good twist to end on. It sets up the next series so, so well. Even though I wasn't really a fan of seeing the parallel world, as you know, I love dark characters. So seeing Jace in this sort of alternate version is hella interesting. And Cassandra Clare is very good at dark characters. As we all know, I really enjoyed Julian without his emotions on. One of my favorite things about this book was Kieran and Diogo getting a big part to play. They were one of the characters that I wasn't really sure about at the start of the series. They are now one of my favorites ever out of the whole Shadowhunter universe. I think Zara needs to be talked about at this point because I've never ever despised a villain this much. This was definitely a very progressive book as we already discussed. The representation is so good. I have gone into this a little bit in the earlier clip. I think having Sebastian be in this book for such a long period of time really took away from the actual plot of the book. I found the Faye politics and the whole Ash situation so much more fun to read about. We could have got that within a chapter, I think. They could have gone to get the sword, we could have found out what happened to everyone. But overall, I really did enjoy this book. I think it sets the next series up so, so well. And I love the characters that we have met throughout this whole series. I think Lady Midnight remains as my favorite. So I hope you enjoyed me telling you all of my life thoughts. This is one of the hardest videos I've ever had to film because every time something happened, I wanted to pick up the camera and talk about it but then this video would be hours and hours long. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment on what you think of the book as well. I'd love to talk to you about it. And I will see you next time. Bye.